Well, it's January 5th up on the peninsula. We did have a huge snowstorm over Christmas. Most of that's melted now. So I guess that makes it a good time to do some routine maintenance. I think anybody that owns a snowmobile should also own a grease gun and know how to properly lubricate your steering and rear suspension components for two reasons. For one thing, it's dead easy, even if you have zero mechanical aptitude. And it's also something that should be done more than once a year. So even if you're taking your sled into the dealer for service, it's something you should probably do at least once through the season. Now it is really simple, but if you've never owned a grease gun before, there are a couple of really common problems that I wish somebody had told me about. So we're gonna talk about grease in a sled. I'm gonna give you some tips for dealing with some common problems that you run into with a grease gun. But even if you've been using a grease gun for years, if you stick around, I'm gonna show you a new type of grease gun I just got my hands on that could make life a whole lot easier. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to my garage. If you're running old sleds, you wanna keep them going as long as possible, and routine maintenance is a big part of that. And lubrication should be part of your regular maintenance routine. Now, some parts, like your rear idler wheels, will have a sealed bearing like this one. So the ball bearings inside this are lubricated with grease, but it's done at the factory. And then they put this plastic dust shield over it to keep water and other contaminants out. Now, some guys like to prolong the life of these bearings by removing that shield, cleaning all the debris and old grease out of there and then repacking them. But they're really not intended to be re-greased. But other parts in your suspension like the arms and the rail and frame pivots are. Your rear suspension is in a constant state of motion when you're riding and it's exposed to a lot of water and road salt and other contaminants. So if you want the sled to last as long as it can, then we wanna force that moisture out and we wanna reduce friction between those parts. So we need to grease it on a regular basis. In terms of how often to do that, if you get online, you're gonna find a ton of different answers. Some guys will say grease it every time you ride it. Other people will say do it once a year. The best place to start if you've got one is your manual. So most owner's manuals are gonna have some section or table where they spell out what the manufacturer recommends for routine maintenance. My manual says inspect and lubricate the suspension when you put it away for storage and during the riding season, monthly or every 800 kilometers. And if you don't have a manual, that's pretty standard. Now you're really not gonna hurt anything by lubricating it too often, but like a lot of maintenance items on your sled, it really depends how much you ride. Now it's also gonna depend on how much snow I get and how long my season is. So a lot of years it's January, February, and part of March. In that case, then I would grease the suspension when I put it away for storage and maybe the first week of February. But if we're really lucky, it starts to snow early and I'm riding in December, then I'd probably grease it at the beginning of January, the beginning of February, and then when I put it away for the summer. So what do you need for this? You're gonna need a grease gun and you're gonna need some grease. Now, if you don't have a grease gun, you probably should get one. I did survive quite nicely for like the first 40 years of my life without a grease gun, but if you've got a riding lawnmower, if you've got a snowblower, there's gonna be grease points on those as well. And you're gonna need some grease. Now, there's a ton of different brands on the market, so I'm not really gonna get into that, but I do recommend that you get a synthetic grease and you should get something that's rated for low temperature use. All right, the next thing you wanna do is find all the grease fittings on your sled. You can have a look in the manual or get a flashlight and just check the whole suspension over and find them all. So I'll give you a close up on one of these so you know what they look like. Grease fittings are also called Zerks and that is because the person who first patented them was a fella named Oscar Zerk. And some guys will call them grease nipples. <laughs> you said nipples. So I can show you where they all are, but they're gonna vary from sled to sled. This 2005 Rev chassis has five grease fittings in the rear suspension and one in the left and the right swivel for the steering. And they're right down underneath. You'll have to pull the pipe to get at them. This old 670, it's got the swing arm style suspension. So there is a grease fitting on the spindle as well. So once you find all those fittings, just take your grease gun, press the coupler onto that fitting and then give it two to three pumps on the gun. So a couple of pumps, if you see any grease squeezing out anywhere, you've got enough in there and you can move to the next fitting. Once you've got them all, you're finished. Now this Rev also has a grease fitting in the end cover for the rotational sensor that drives your speedometer. That's down underneath the secondary clutch. Now sometimes a grease fitting will get blocked with dirt or dried grease and you can't get any grease into it. Just grab a seven mil wrench, take it out and clean it. So you can use a pick and carefully remove anything you can, then spray something like a WD-40 or brake cleaner in there. Then use your compressor to make sure that there's none of it left in there. Put it in the grease gun and squeeze some grease through to make sure it's clear and then reinstall it. Just make sure you have a pair of needle nose pliers handy to pull it back out of the coupler and be really careful when you thread it back in. So as I promised, that is a really, really easy process, but there are a couple of problems that are really common with a grease gun. Now for the first one, you go to grease your sled. You know that the grease gun is full of grease, but when you pump the handle, nothing's coming out. 
Well, it's lost its prime or it's airlocked. The way the grease gun works, inside this cylinder is a plunger, and there's a spring that presses on that plunger and pushes grease up into the gun. At the top is a piston, so every time you squeeze the handle, that piston pushes some grease into the hose. What happens when you load the gun or if the gun's been sitting for a long period of time, you can get an air pocket form up here. So then every time you push on the handle, all you're pushing is air. So to solve that problem or reprime the gun, we want to get the air out of there and we want to push more grease up. So the first thing you do, pull back on the following rod. And depending on the type of grease gun you have, you can usually lock and unlock the plunger from the follower plate by giving it a bit of a twist. Okay, so before we push the plunger back in, we need to give that air somewhere to go. So if your gun has a valve like this one, you press down on it while you press up on the plunger. Otherwise, what you can do is crack the seal by turning the cylinder back a couple of times. Now the air can escape around the threads. Push the plunger back in, tighten it back up, and you should be good to go. The other thing that happens, especially if they've been stored for a while, is they'll leak. So over time, oil will separate out of the grease, and then it leaks out of the hole around the following rod. And that happens even more when the grease is warm. I did not know that, and like a lot of things, I learned that lesson the hard way. So over the summer, I stored the grease gunny in the shed, and I hung it from a screw where it was hanging upright like that. And over the summer, it was leaking onto the shelf under it, and it made a heck of a mess. Now, some guys will store them in a plastic bucket or a specialty holder. Otherwise, you want to store the grease gun laying down horizontally. You want to store it somewhere cool, and it's not a bad idea to put it on some newspapers or a piece of plastic. Now, the same is true of the cartridges. They leak as well. So always store them standing up. Put the metal part down with the plastic cap up. Now, those tips will make your life easier, but if you're using this type of grease gun, you're always going to have those problems. They're always going to get air locked and they're always going to leak. So I've referred to this type of grease gun a couple of times in the video. So you might be wondering, well, what other type of grease gun is there? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you're really observant, you might've noticed this cartridge sitting on the workbench and it's a little bit different than the others. So this cartridge is threaded on the top and it's meant to be used with a different kind of grease gun like this one from Lube Shuttle. Now, I already know a lot of you guys will just stick with your old grease guns. Those few problems are not gonna be enough to make you go out and buy a new one. But what I can tell you is the Lube Shuttle gun doesn't leak, it doesn't lose its prime, it doesn't even make a mess when you refill it. It's definitely worth taking a look at. The Loop Shuttle gun is manufactured in Germany and it's quite different than the grease gun you're probably used to. So when you first get it out of the box, you might feel like it's kind of cheaply made because it's lightweight, but it's not. The reason it's lightweight, if I screw this cylinder off, all the cylinder is for on this type of grease gun is just to cover the grease cartridge. So it doesn't have a plunger or a diaphragm at all. And that difference is the reason that this style of gun isn't susceptible to the same problems that the spring and piston type are. So in this one, the following plate is part of the cartridge itself. It's also what makes loading this type of gun so easy. So I screw the cap off of the cartridge. I press up a little bit on the diaphragm just till I get some grease above the top of the tube. And then I just thread the cartridge into the gun. And it's that easy. There's, it's already primed, there's no air pocket. There's already grease in the hose because I've done this before. But there you go. So you don't have to remove the cylinder to load it. I just did that to show you. And you can slide it back on and thread it on after the fact. Now you can store the grease cartridge in the gun because it's threaded in and it's sealed and it has the diaphragm in the back so it won't leak. But this is the other feature I really like. If you want to, you can unthread this cartridge, put the cap back on and store it. So the reason that I like that feature is if you use multiple different types of grease, so you got a low temperature grease for the sled, you got a different grease for your lawnmower, it's really easy to just switch between the grease. So there's so many advantages to the design of this grease gun. If you want to know how much grease you have left, you just look in the bottom. If you use more than one type of grease and you want to know what type is in the gun, you can just unscrew the sleeve and have a look. The grease in it won't dry up, harden, or leak. And the fact that it doesn't leak is huge. The fact it doesn't leak doesn't matter how you hang it. So if you wanted to, you can mount it upright like this on the wall, or even in the cab of your tractor. There's a bracket that they sell. It's about 15 bucks. There's also some attachments that are worth looking at. So the standard four jaw coupler, they're pretty tight on those Zerks. And sometimes you can work a little bit to get them off. The problem is when you're under that skid, there's a couple of places where it's kind of tight and you can rack up your knuckles. So a lot of people like a locking coupler. So if you've never used a locking coupler before, they're far easier to put on and off the fitting. The one from Lube Shuttle is called Safe Lock and it sells for $49. Now some fittings can be pretty hard to reach depending on what you're trying to grease. So they do make a number of different couplers. They have a six inch straight rigid tube. I think this one is $10. They make a 90 degree elbow. 
That one I think is $27. So a number of different options. There's also a number of different styles of guns. They have a cordless version. They have sort of the pump style one as well as the pistol grip. Now, if there's a downside, it's the grease cartridges because you have to use a specific type of grease cartridge. But I mean, nowadays you do a lot of online shopping anyway. So you can go to the Loop Shuttle website and look for this stuff. So this grease is made by Wagner and it's marketed under an AirTech brand. They sell a variety of grease. This particular cartridge is one of their more expensive ones. It's fully synthetic. It's rated to minus 40. This is $31 Canadian. So it's comparable with some specialty greases and more expensive than others. If you get online and Google Lube Shuttle, you'll find that you can get these cartridges in a number of different places in addition to the Lube Shuttle website. But have a look at the Loop Shuttle website because they market a bunch of different grease and I think they're all rated to minus 30. And I think you can get them as cheap as like 11 or 12 bucks. The other advantage is buying in bulk, right? So if you buy a 10 pack, you're saving, I think it's down to like $28 a cartridge. And again, with this style of cartridge, got the cap on it, it's not gonna leak and it's not gonna break down. I know from the forum, some people use any old grease in their sled. Other riders want to at least make sure that they have a decent synthetic water resistant grease. But if you're someone that's really attached to a specific brand of grease for your snowmobile, then that's obviously something to think about. So if I compare this to my other grease gun, which is like $40 grease gun, this is not a budget option, but it's a much better option. So this gun is $83 Canadian. That's with the hose and the coupler. If you get just the bare gun, it's $60 Canadian. And for me, I would definitely say it's worth it. I can't believe how quick and easy this thing was to reload. And the one thing I can't believe is how clean and mess free this gun is. So for half this video, I'm using a standard grease gun, right? I am constantly stopping to wipe my hands or go in and wash them because I'm handling the camera or I had to answer my phone. The lube shuttle gun, because of the type of cartridge it uses, I've loaded it and unloaded it three times shooting this video and I've greased the sled a couple of times. And there's like no grease on it anywhere. The only way you're gonna get any grease is from the end of the coupler. All right guys, so there's everything you ever wanted to know about greasing your sled and how to grease it with the Loop Shuttle grease gun. But how about you guys? How often do you grease the sled and what type of grease do you use? So I think I'm gonna call that a wrap for another video. If you liked it, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, think about subscribing to the channel, click the little bell icon, you get notified whenever I post a new video. All right guys, until next time, I'm David Clark. And thanks for taking the time to watch. So if you want your suspension to last as long as possible, then we need to voice, voice. Uh, so most owner's managers are gonna have, well, I'm glad you went, shake it. So if you get online, you Google goo, 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 goo. I am your father.